This is Woodbridge Airfield, an American Air Force base in eastern England. Woodbridge and Bentwaters Field, located some six miles away, form a twin base complex that is the home of the Air Force's 81st Tactical Fighter Wing, armed with some 150 A-10 tank buster aircraft. Four years ago, however, Woodbridge Field was the site of something that witnesses say seemed to be taken from science fiction. And it looked more like a um, small lights, a cluster of small lights, instead of one big one. Jerry Harris is a mechanic who owns a car repair shop just off the runway at Bentwaters Field, about five miles from Woodbridge. I suppose it must have been there, as far as I know, for three quarters of an hour. It must be somewhere like there. And all of a sudden, I blinked and it was gone. Gordon Levitt, a game warden who lives in Orford near Woodbridge, saw it too. First of all, it looked as though it, uh, it was an aircraft. The light was coming in. It appeared to be quite slow, and then it speeded up, and it came towards the lodge. And the closer it got, the more I realized it was not an aircraft. The British tabloid press had a field day with reports of the incident, with stories of flying saucers, mysterious lights, and even aliens. The Times of London, however, dismissed the incident and poked fun at the other newspapers. It quoted this man, Vince Thurkettle, a forester who works near the alleged landing site. Thurkettle told CNN that the UFO was merely a beam of light from the nearby Orford Lighthouse. But if you didn't know it was a lighthouse, if you thought it was something small, maybe two, three meters across, pulsing about and pulsing white in the forest, yes, it looks as if it's within the trees. And it does appear to light up the trees as well. But Gordon Levitt, the game warden, who is also familiar with the forest, dismissed the lighthouse theory outright. Uh, at the moment, we're standing on the Orford Quay, and quite clearly, you can see the lighthouse over there flashing. And uh, the light from the UFO was totally um, nothing like the light from the lighthouse. What makes the Bentwaters Woodbridge UFO incident unique is that this official U.S. Air Force report, obtained under the Freedom of Information Act, documents two UFO incidents that were intensely investigated by the Air Force. It states, Early in the morning of December 27, 1980, two Air Force security police patrolmen saw unusual lights outside the back gate at RAF Woodbridge. Thinking an aircraft might have crashed, they called for permission to investigate. The on-duty flight chief allowed three patrolmen to proceed on foot. The individuals reported seeing a strange glowing object in the forest that was metallic in appearance and triangular in shape, approximately two to three meters across the base and two meters high. It illuminated the entire forest with a white light. The object had a pulsating red light on top and a bank of blue lights underneath. It was hovering or on legs. As the patrolman approached, it maneuvered through the trees and disappeared. The next day, three depressions, one and a half inches deep and seven inches in diameter, were found where the object had been sighted on the ground. The following night, the area was checked for radiation. Beta gamma readings of 0.1 millirens were recorded with peak readings in the three depressions and near the center of the triangle formed by the depressions. A nearby tree had moderate readings on the side of the tree toward the depressions. Later in the night, a red sun-like light was seen through the trees. It moved about and pulsed. At one point, it appeared to throw off glowing particles and then broke into five separate white objects and then disappeared. Immediately thereafter, three star-like objects were noticed in the sky, two objects to the north and one to the south, all of which were about 10 degrees off the horizon. The objects moved about in sharp angular movements and displayed red, green, and blue lights. The objects to the north appeared to be elliptical and then turned to full circles and remained in the sky for an hour or more. The object to the south was visible for two or three hours and beamed down a stream of light from time to time. Numerous individuals, including the undersigned, witnessed the activities in paragraphs two and three. Signed Charles I. Halt, Lieutenant Colonel, United States Air Force, Deputy Base Commander. No, I think I saw a UFO. Some kind of a spaceship from someplace, not of this Earth. Airman Gregg is a former Air Force security policeman who says he was a witness to the second of two UFO landings on consecutive days in December 1980 outside the U.S. Air Force Base at Woodbridge, England. Those events were documented in this official U.S. Air Force report 
released under the Freedom of Information Act. This now retired security police master sergeant went to the site of the incident along with others to determine what had happened. To protect his current government job, he asked not to be identified. And in the approximate location of uh, this alleged craft landing in the wooded area, I found what appeared to be three depressions in the ground. The ground was rather soft at that time, but uh, three depressions in a triangular pattern. But it turned out that they were 12 foot apart, equidistant from each other, uh, measured from center to center. An officer who accompanied Master Sergeant G corroborates that account, but since he is still on active duty, he too asked for anonymity. Both he and the sergeant said they took photographs of the physical evidence. I took the pictures and uh, we thought we had some evidence, but when the pictures came back, uh, they were all uh, whited out. There was nothing on the, on the film itself or on the negatives. Because the site of the incident was located on public land between the two air bases, British police were also called in to investigate. We showed them the, the, uh, the three indentations, and uh, we told them the, the events that had, had occurred earlier that, that morning, and uh, their explanation to us was that these three indentations were probably caused by hens or rabbits uh, burrowing in the ground trying to keep warm during the night. At that time, I told them that these indentations were obviously 12 feet apart, and that that was rather peculiar, especially when they were in a perfect triangle. Their reply back to us was that since UFOs didn't exist, they would put on their report that if they were animals that had made these indentations and nothing else. According to Air Force sources, the deputy base commander, Lieutenant Colonel Charles I. Halt, later the author of the only known written account of the UFO events, advised a heightened state of surveillance in case the UFO returned. The following night, a four-man perimeter patrol near the back gate at Woodbridge saw the UFO again. Uh, Airman did. Gregg was a member of that patrol. We were about halfway into the ship, I guess, when uh, we noticed some lights in the sky that uh, didn't seem to follow any pattern of any aircraft that we'd seen. And uh, we... Uh, watched him for a while and he disappeared and the next thing what we saw was uh, the lights in a forest in a clearing it was uh, off the end of the runway and uh, we called you know, central security control to tell them that we'd like to uh, go investigate it and they gave us permission to go ahead and go on out as we got in there we uh, could see into the clearing and see a series of lights in there uh, surrounded by like a ground fog. That we, was kind of common in the area, so we didn't really think too much of it. And we decided to go a little bit closer to see what we could find out. And when we got closer, it began to feel the hair on your arms and the back of your neck and your, your head, under your head even, stand on end. It's like it was a real big static charge in the air. Let me ask, were you armed at the time? Yes. What kind of a weapon were you carrying? M16. Did you... Uh load the weapon at any time? Yes, I did. I loaded it and put it on semi-automatic. Uh, we didn't know what we were encountering, and we knew it was something that uh, that was totally beyond our realm of experience. We'd never experienced anything like this before. And about that time, we decided that we better get the heck out of there because we were getting a little too scared to, uh, to stick around. And we saw some other people coming up from one of the access roads. Those people were more Air Force security policemen led by Lieutenant Colonel Charles I. Halt. When we return, we'll listen to this audio tape recorded by Colonel Halt and others as they witness the UFO event. Brentwaters Woodbridge Air Base Complex in East England, Christmas week, 1980. Three U.S. airmen claim an encounter with a UFO at close range. About a day later, this man, who asked not to be identified, was on perimeter patrol at Woodbridge Air Base. We began to feel the, uh, the hair on our arms stand up, and we could see into the clearing and see a, a set of, of lights that seemed to be alternating through different color ranges, but it was predominantly a, a red or reddish orange hue to it. Uh, I said, let's just get the heck out of here and turn around and left. And we took off at a run <laughs> and went back to our vehicle. As they reached their patrol truck, he says there were about half a dozen vehicles and about 30 men strung out along the roadside. Among the first to arrive, was Deputy Base Commander Lieutenant Colonel Charles I. Halt and a three-man team. One of them is this sergeant. He is still on active duty and asked to have his identity concealed. 
right now I do believe that UFOs exist. Up until that point, I'd been skeptical. Now I believe there may have been someone else there. Although the Air Force contends that there is no audiovisual evidence of the Bentwaters incidents, CNN has obtained a tape recording made by Lieutenant Colonel Halt during one of the encounters. The 20 minute tape covers segments of events over a seven hour period. Colonel Halt and his team started searching for the object and found what they thought was the same UFO landing site reported a day or so earlier. We found a small blast, what looks like a blast in a scuffed up area here. We've got really positive readings. Let's see, is that near the center? Yes, it is. This is According to Sergeant B, the team member carrying the Geiger counter was selected by Colonel Halt to take photographs and radioactivity readings. Uh, Sergeant Nevels, who is a disaster preparedness uh, specialist, he operated the Geiger counter. Uh, well, he, he was the expert on it, so he carried it and he operated it. Colonel Halt recorded the radioactivity data in detail in his official report. One of those readings was taken from a tree facing the suspected landing site. Colonel Halt also noticed unusual abrasions on the nearby trees and ordered Sergeant Nevels to take photographs. And according to the Halt tape, there was additional physical evidence. It was at about that time that Sergeant B and the others apparently saw something. You just saw a light yeah, where? Right, 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 right on this position here, straight ahead from between the switch. There it is again. Watch, straight ahead off left right there. There, 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 there it is. Hey, I see it too. I'm standing at the landing site described by Colonel Halt in his report. Behind me is the light from the Orford Lighthouse. It flashes every five seconds and is less than 10 miles away. The question remains, however, how could Colonel Halt and his men mistake that light on two different nights for something radically different? Critics say that the light the men saw also appeared at roughly five second intervals, and so the lighthouse beacon must be the source of the light. Here's what happened when we synchronized the Halt tape, noting each sighting with the lighthouse beacon. The initial sightings, at least, appear to coincide. We asked Sergeant B if he and the others could have been mistaken. I've never once seen a lighthouse that moved. And this object moved because we followed it. Under no, no way could that be the Orford Lighthouse. It's moved to the right. Yeah. Off to the right. Later, Colonel Halt and his men are recorded observing other objects. His report describes a red sun-like light that threw off glowing particles and broke up into five separate white objects. Immediately after, they noticed another object in the sky. On the halt tape, he and others continue to observe the objects for several hours, and Halt noted it in his report. 
Colonel Halt would not comment officially to CNN about these strange incidents. My first impression is that I thought they were children, because my mind wouldn't accept what I was seeing. I thought they were children in snowsuits. Larry Warren uh, says he's willing to risk I ridicule to tell about his encounter with what he says appear to be alien beings. Larry Warren is today a sales representative for a medical company living and working in a typical suburban community. But a little over four years ago, as an enlisted man in the U.S. Air Force, he claims he had a most untypical experience when he came face to face with something he admits he has trouble describing. Warren was assigned to security at the Bentwaters Woodbridge Air Force Base complex in England. He says he was a witness to the second of two UFO encounters on succeeding days in the forest separating the two bases. And CNN has found, except for Warren's description of the alien beings, others who were there who have given strikingly similar accounts of the UFOs. Well, it was predominant. It looked like a fire at first. That's what we thought it was. So it was more like a red or reddish-orange color, but it had other colors moving around in it. We saw flying objects containing maybe other people or another life form. There were a number of different phenomena seen a triangular luminous flying object with a red light on top and a series of blue lights underneath, a circular translucent ground-hugging disk, various lights moving erratically about the night sky, one of which occasionally beamed a shaft of white light downward, and a luminous pulsating red-orange sphere. Didn't look solid at all, it just looked like a self-admitted you know, piece of light. It was just odd. Uh, it seemed like it was no sooner there that it blew up not outward or upward, it just blew down with all these sparkles and different colors of light. Uh, indescribable, because it's beyond me how this thing, ha this happened. We weren't injured by it, and I was very close, and uh, it changed. And that was the weirdest thing about it. It changed into the ship that people had seen earlier. The three cops had followed out there. Warren's description of the transformed object appears to match what three airmen reportedly saw at the same location the night before. But Warren's story takes an even stranger twist. At that point, we saw people, or whatever you want to call them, uh, coming out. They didn't come out. There were no doors or anything on this ship. These things moved out. There were three of them. And they were covered with, they had light around them. And it, you know, they came out. They stood there. And they actually floated to make it more complicated. Uh, Beings. And beings, exactly. Uh, no threatening motions were made at us by them. They didn't communicate with me at all. Uh, our base commander was there. Uh, Who was your with, base commander? Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Gordon Williams. The official Air Force response is that Williams, now a general, did not witness the alleged incident. CNN has contacted two airmen who Warren says were present that night. Both say that something happened, but neither confirm nor deny Warren's story. A non-commissioned officer who helped conduct a subsequent investigation of one of the reported landing sites says his superiors seem to have little interest in pursuing it. Things seem to be clamped down quite suddenly, and nobody was talking to anybody else about it. And when I tried to find or ask specific questions about things, Nobody knew anything. Larry Fawcett is a full-time police detective. He is also the co-author of a book which uses government documents to support its argument that there has been an official cover-up of the UFO experience. He says military personnel have good reason to be reluctant to talk about their experiences. Uh, the reason for them not talking is usually that they've been threatened, threatened or they fall under uh, the regulation Jane Up 146. Uh, which talks about if anybody uh, talks about UFO events that have been reported in the military, they're subject to fine, loss of pension and retirement and every other thing, and even jail time. CNN began asking the Air Force for information about the Bentwaters UFO incident six months ago. Throughout, the Air Force has been slow to respond. And when it did reply, the answer was usually, quote, unknown, end quote, or in some cases, apparently misleading. For example, when CNN asked, are there any photographs, tape recordings, videotapes, drawings, or descriptions of any kind in Air Force files? The official U.S. Air Force reply was, quote, there was no audiovisual documentation done, end quote. However, as we reported earlier in this series, there was an audio tape made during the second of two UFO encounters. 
CNN has also found an officer who says he drove the base commander to a waiting airplane to deliver what he was told was a motion picture film of one of the UFOs. Uh, we drove on and I asked him what was in the film. He said, this is a, and we actually have the picture of the UFO here. And uh, he, he got off the Jeep, went to the aircraft, handed the film to the pilot, the canopy closed and the aircraft took off. I asked him where it was headed and he said, Germany. Larry Fawcett says he thinks the Air Force could be involved in a cover-up. Number one, they've been telling the public for 30 years there's no such thing as UFOs. How can they reverse themselves now and say there is and they've been lying and covering it up? If it is a cover-up, then the American public may never know what those airmen saw at Bent Waters in 1980. If they were merely Keystone cops who were hallucinating, as one critic suggests, then what are the national security implications of those same airmen guarding a strategically important air base where nuclear weapons are reportedly stored? If they weren't hallucinating, then what are the implications of what they actually did see? When CNN recently asked the Air Force about the possible existence of movie film of the Bentwaters UFO, the official Air Force response was, the United States Air Force stopped investigating UFOs in 1969. This is Chuck DeCaro, CNN Special Assignments.